Today, we're also thrilled to welcome Farah Serik as our first guest speaker. Farah is an exceptional 11-year-old girl, a Nike Kids Ambassador, and Anna Freud Youth Champion. Farah is an elite athlete and a mental health campaigner, promoting the importance of sports and physical activity for one's mental well-being. Throughout lockdown, she has been hosting live daily workouts, focusing on cardio activity and promoting physical exercise as a way of keeping both your body and mind healthy. As a result, she was the recipient of the Jack Petchy Award, recognizing her outstanding work in a time of national crisis. Last month, she was the runner-up in the BBC's Young Sports Personality of the Year Award. Although, of course, this award goes up to the age of 19, and she is but 11, I'm sure we will be seeing her again on that stage. Needless to say, we are very excited to have Farah with us today. Farah, welcome to the iTalk and the 17 plus one club family. Question, what is the best thing you can do for your brain today? Hmm, let me think. Is it to read more? Um, maybe. Is it to do more schoolwork? Um, I guess that could be a good option. Is it to listen more intently in your teacher's lessons? No, it's to exercise. Yes, exercise. One of the best things you can do for your brain today is exercise. According to neuroscientist Wendy Suzuki, professor at the New York University University Center of Neuroscience, she states that sport and exercise is the most transformative thing you can do for your brain today. Today I'm here to encourage you to exercise more because it can improve the whole outlook of how you feel about yourself and prepare you better for any life challenges you may face. I am hoping by the end of this talk that I have convinced you to one, exercise if you don't already, and two, if you do exercise, to make sure you're doing enough for the best results possible for body and mind. When you exercise, you release chemicals in your body called serotonin and endorphins, which is your body's natural happy hormone, so you feel happier as a result. Perfect. Let's call these happy, hmm, friendly fellas. And who doesn't love a friendly fella? I surely do. I love sharing my life with them all day long. I'm a very person most of the time, and it's because I share my life with these friendly fellas. And by friendly fellas, I don't mean Anton Deck. No, 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 I mean serotonin. Let's give an example of how serotonin makes me feel. Every day I go on a run with my family after school, which takes my heart rate up. And when my heart rate increases through exercise, my brain releases serotonin, which boosts my overall sense of well-being. My brain tells my body I'm feeling good, so out come those friendly fellas dancing on cloud nine. It improves my sleep cycle too, and sets me up for a great day. And I feel so happy, full of energy, and ready for my homework and the next day ahead. Thank you, friendly fellas. Now, let's talk about productivity. Sport and exercise has the power to enable you to work more efficiently and concentrate better. Especially as many people complain when they're at school that they are either tired or something else is bothering them. Increased productivity is noticeable with, within weeks of implementing an exercise regime. Exercise raises your energy levels, combats stress, battles fatigue, and improves general well being. When you feel happier and more energized, you're more efficient and effective in all tasks at life. Concentration is improved and you'll be able to concentrate better, more, not only in lessons, but at home too, which is also nicer for a family dynamic. To the non-believers. Firstly, it is clinically proven that sport and exercise positively affect you. And you can't dismiss proven science. Secondly, for those that say that they don't want to exercise or other things make them happy, I say this. That's totally wonderful. But why not have another weapon of defense in your armor to defend challenges and let that weapon be exercise? Okay, you're not gonna believe this. A recent study performed by Harvard University said that just by going on an hour's walk or a 15 minute, the risk of depression is reduced by 26%. Now, imagine if we did that more, how much fitter, 
and stronger would our world and healthier would our world be. Just imagine that. My mum always tells me that in life things good and bad will happen. And for the bad things is how you respond to them that matters, not always the thing itself. Um, if you've developed your mental fitness throughout your life and are met better equipped with challenges that life throws at you. I have seen firsthand how exercise positively affects your sense of well-being through my own mum who suffers from anxiety and how exercising helps her to combat her anxiety too as she shares her life with these friendly fellows when she needs them. Her exercise choice is back, which is a hit workout that really gets your heart rate up. And she says it gives her a triumphant feeling afterwards. If she's ever stressed or anxious, I say to her, why don't you visit this guy called Barry? It will help. So she does. And guess what? It does. For maximum results, you should be aiming to exercise at least three to four times a week for at least half an hour each time. Finally, I want to quote TED Talk speaker Wendy Suzuki, who I started off my talk with, who believes, as I do, that by continually exercising throughout your life, sport and exercise has the power to change the trajectory of your life for the better. Thank you so much for listening.